morning, I'm talking to you from the Paramount Hotel off Times Square. And the reason that I'm doing a uh, stand and talk is because the weather outside is A, cold, and B, um, uh, the winds are blowing at 18 miles an hour. So I doubt that you can hear me. So uh, forgive me, but uh, I'm making adjustments being in New York for my daily walk and talk. The um, temperature here is uh, chilly, and uh, yesterday it was uh, in the low 30s most of the day. So um, what's going on? Well, one of the things about any uh, vacation or escape from what you normally do is an opportunity to uh, well, think of a little bit about uh, what's important to you and what's going on. And so while here, uh, I've sort of done some business, but I've also gone back to old haunts with Holly and, uh, for example, Columbia University and, uh, and the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, and the, the museum, museum is interesting because you may remember that I spoke about what it was like at Ground Zero, uh, the uh, recovery as best we can from what happened at 9-11, showing that the spirit of Americans is such that we do get up and we do uh, deal with the difficulties of a civilization uh, emerging and tested from time to time. And we're certainly being tested now. And at the museum, for example, there's another example, and it is the uh, steadfast belief by some Americans of all colors that people should be treated equally. And Plessy v. Er uh, Ferguson is an example of that. And the notion was that in a, uh, a decision with only one dissent by uh, a justice, they decided that separate was equal. And uh, that presumes that when you separate someone, they are not equal. And you know, it took some time for that to go on. And there are artists who uh, both painted the Renaissance of, of Harlem, and then there are other artists that preserved a woman who was an octoroon, meaning that she was uh, part black. And uh, in the portrait of her, there is a picture of a Union soldier off to the side, which suggests that she was of mixed blood. And it was interesting, Plessy v. Ferguson, that uh, if a, a white person got on a bus uh, and they had an aide who was a person of color, that that person of color could sit with that person, showing the indignity that only as servants were you allowed to be in that situation. Now, we go forward to 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education. And in that decision, it, it was going to be that all people were treated equal. It's a very strong decision about integration and about education. But one of the phrases that haunted people because of that decision was the notion that it was going to be done with all deliberate speed, and all deliberate speed meant very deliberate, slowing, delay speed. In the end, we had those achievements, but they've been put at risk in recent day. They've been put at, put at risk ever since, I guess if you will, it was that Trump lanced the boil of hate in America, which brings us to where we are today, uh, fighting back to restore the republic that was compromised and to go forward with uh, the continuous perfection of that. Now, the Supreme Court, which is the focus of uh, my comment so far, is again being tested, but it's failing that test. I've uh, said before, and you probably remember it, that uh, Breyer, I think, is a hero on the court. But he's always understood that the court doesn't have an army it has to rely on the trust of people. Uh, and it can't have that trust if it's not recognizing, say in Dobbs, what it means to have a consistent and, uh, an, and a long-standing view of what the law means to the people and that it be respected and understood and so forth. And that's been seriously compromised going back, of course, to um, uh, Bush v. Gore. But we've seen it in recent days in the Dobbs case. And uh, Breyer has just come out with a book expanding upon that and spending a lot of time talking about Dobbs, which I think is, uh, makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because there's such a revolutionary change after 50 years going backwards and, uh, and depriving women of the right to be let alone. But his, the thrust of his remarks is that 
we have to have law we can trust. And how can you have an opinion like Dobbs that seems to sanction people, women, dying on an operating table for the failure of the adoption of a myth that has no medical science view? Now, all of this I see as a background, and the reason I'm taking some time to comment, and we've all talked about this before, is because of the pending uh, decision before the Supreme Court, and I think April 25th they're supposed to have the oral argument on this, and it is whether or not a president has immunity from prosecution. Now, the way Trump phrases it is that he has immunity for official acts. Well, overthrowing the government is not an official act. Uh, manipulating an election is not an official act. Lying in courts through your agents, lawyers like Rudy Giuliani and others, uh, about how there's been fraud when it's known there is none, that's not an official act. But that is what the president is arguing for. And what the Supreme Court uh, it seems to be indicating they're just fine with. Now, I've referred to a cult of six, and Justice Breyer, he referred instead to a uh, cult of three, if you will, the three more recent members of the court. So uh, what we have to do is we have to keep the faith, if you will, but I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a belief in the promise of America. And I'm also talking about uh, what we have to do, that is not to remain silent, not necessarily to get on a soapbox somewhere, but every opportunity we have to support the view that law matters, because it plainly does. And if we needed proof that we would have trouble standing in the wind that would blow, we have it now. Well, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I've got today, and I hope, uh, I hope this is helpful to you, understanding, uh, at least from my perspective, what I think is going on. Uh, Holly and I uh, have some more things to do here. Uh, I heard from MSNBC, so I may get to go down to uh, uh, Rockefeller Center <laughs> and appear on Ari's show on Thursday. But uh, it's it's nice visiting with you. I'm sorry I can't do it with the uh, 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 wonderful verdant green behind me, but I have posted a picture of Central Park where we were the other day. So all the best. Bye-bye. <laughs>